All right, in this video, I'm going to work out some practice SAT math questions, and I'm not going to write the questions down, but here they are. So number one, it says, um, we've got this table. Total distance traveled by a particular bird was recorded after various numbers of hours in flight. It says it travels at a constant speed, so what's the value of t? So basically, you know, it says in five hours it goes 249 miles, and another five hours, since it's traveling at a constant speed, it'll go yet another 249. <clears throat> so we want to figure out after how many hours do we go to 996. Well, notice if you double 498, you'll get 996, which means we simply need to double the number of hours. So this one's not too bad. You would get that your answer is C equals 20. <clears throat> Part 2, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, if y squared equals square root of x and y equals 3, what is the value of x? Well, this is one we can simply plug things in. So it says 3 squared is the square root of x. Well, 3 squared is 9. And if we solve for x, we can just square both sides and get that 81 equals x. So 81 will be our answer in that case. <clears throat> Let's see, in number three it says if points K and L lie on this line JM, <clears throat> it says KM is 14, KJ is 6, and L is the midpoint. So we want to figure out KL. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little picture here for my, for my line. So we've got J and M. <clears throat> we'll put K somewhere in the middle. So We'll put K right there. It says L is the midpoint. So let's see. Um, we know that this distance KJ is 6. We know that the distance from KM is 14. We know that this is the midpoint, so we want to know what simply KL equals in this case. So, okay, so we can figure out right off the bat, it looks like JM is going to be simply 20 if we just add everything up. Likewise, we know that L is the midpoint. Since L is the midpoint, that's going to mean that this distance JL is going to equal 10. And since we know that this distance JL, since we know that that entire distance is 10, well, we know that j to k is 6, which means the k to l part must simply be a value of 4. So that would be our answer for that problem. Okay. <clears throat> let's see. Let's look at another one here. Let's see how many we can squeeze in here. It says, Nora has 10 fewer than twice the number of CDs that Deborah has. If N represents the number of Nora's CDs and D represents the number of Deborah's CDs, which of the following is a correct equation relating N and D? Well, to represent twice the number of CDs that Dora has, that would just simply be 2 times D. And 10 fewer just means you would have to subtract 10 away. So it says if we take twice the number that Dora has and subtract 10, that's the number that Nora has. So again, not a lot to do in this case, but A would be your answer. You could always start making up numerical examples that satisfy this first, you know, this relationship, this 10 fewer than twice the number, and then start actually checking the equations if this kind of generalized thinking uh, confuses you a little bit, but hopefully it's not too bad. <clears throat> okay, so in number five, it says, um, let's see if I can get it all in here. It says, for x not equal to 4, and that's just because it, I assume, yeah, it makes the denominator 0. We have 2x squared plus x minus 28 over x squared minus 3x minus 28. And we want to simplify that thing down a little bit. Um, so in this case, what we'll basically just try to do is factor the top and factor the bottom. So I'm going to, again, do this on a different piece of paper here. Alright, so we have 2x squared 
plus x minus 28 over x squared minus 3x minus 28. So, okay, we're just going to try to factor and cancel, that's all. So, in the bottom part, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 28 but add up to negative 3. I think, um, how about x minus 7 and x plus 4? That should simplify back down uh, to what we need in the denominator. And now we have to play around factoring the top out as well. One thing I would look for are for things to cancel. So I know I'm, I know I'm going to need a 2x and an x to get my 2x squared. Now I'm thinking probably either a negative 7 or a positive. There's either going to be an x plus 4 or an x minus 7 term just to make things cancel out. And you can actually check. I think this needs to be an x plus 4 and a 2x minus 7. You'll get 2x squared. You'll get a negative, excuse me, a positive 8x minus 7x, which is positive x and minus 28. So now we can simply cancel out our x plus 4s, and we'll be left with our answer of 2x minus 7 over x minus 7. <clears throat> okay, I think 6 again is one you can kind of talk out. So it says uh, this guy, his collectibles consist of five baseball cards with an average value of $6 each, three rare coins worth a total of $12, and two old comic books of un unknown value. It says the information in which of the following statements would allow this guy to figure out the average value of his collectibles. So one, it says the total value of his collectibles, would that be enough to know? Part answer to you is what percent greater the average value of a baseball card is than the average value of a rare coin and three says the sum of the average value of the baseball cards rare coins and comic books well I think it looks like one should be enough if we know the total value of his collectibles then we could just divide by the number of his collectibles and that would give us the average value um, likewise, part 3 would be enough because we've got, again, a value. We could basically from that figure out the average value of his comic books if we know the average value of everything. I don't think 2 is going to be enough though. It says what percent greater than the average value of a baseball, baseball card is the average value of a rare coin. That still doesn't really tell us anything about the price of the comic books. And that's one of the unknown things in here. So I think 1 and 3 will be enough for us to figure everything out. But 2 is not enough because it doesn't relate anything about to the, uh, the value of his comic books. And that's what's missing in this problem. Alright, I don't know if we have time to maybe do um, one or two more. I'll stop this one here and I'll continue this on in the next video.